All right, so I am transitioning now to some kind of nuts and bolts, you know, information. So we're going to get into, you know, some of these newer insulins. I'm going to spend a bit of time on a Frezza, which is an inhaled insulin, because it is a very different type of insulin. It's different how we take it. It's different how it works. Who here has used a Frezza or, you know, at least tried it? Okay, a lot of people. Who's never heard of it before two minutes ago? All right, good. So we got a good mix of people. So I'm going to talk about a Frezza and some of the newer um, rapid-acting insulins and then some of the newer basal insulins and also kind of how I use these. And like Steve mentioned, I do a lot of research, I do a lot of patient care, but this talk is more just kind of me winging it, you know, a lot of it, my, kind of my diabetes, you know, information that's coming out in addition to my medical background. But anyways, so getting started with rapid acting insulin. So how f rapid is our current rapid acting insulin? So I like this picture because you got this snail coming by the turtle. You know, it's a, it's a big problem, right? You know, everybody with type 1 diabetes will tell you that their insulin just doesn't act fast enough. And I think calling these rapid acting insulins is kind of a joke. You know, because anybody knows if you had a high blood sugar, you take your insulin and you just, you know, stare at your CGM and it just doesn't come down. So this is me doing this the other day. And I like to show that, yes, as somebody living with type 1 diabetes, I'm a doctor. Guess what? My blood sugar goes over 120 every once in a while. Um, so here's me the other day. My blood sugar is 300. You know, I take three units, you know, some time goes by, I'm just waking up, I'm kind of upset, take three units, nothing's happening. And then do what we do, as we say, a rage bolus, where <laughs> all calculations just disappear from your brain. You dial up whatever seems reasonable at the time, so that was eight <laughs> units. And then, you know, invariably, a little bit later, there's the oh crap. Uh, moment and you start, you know, eating everything in sight, you know, you raid the fridge, you do what I did on that video last night where you get out the pizza, the peanut butter, everything. Guess what? Then you go high again, then you rage bolus, then you go low, and you eat everything in sight and you get on this roller coaster. So not having an insulin that, that acts uh, fast enough is a big problem. So here's me again the other day and I ate a burrito bowl, at, you know, for dinner. And I bolused a little bit after my burrito bowl because it was all fat and protein, there was no real carbs in it, so I thought I was being kind of smart. And I went to bed, and I didn't hear my CGM alarm, but you'll see that, you know, my blood sugars go up to 300 and then kind of come down without me bolusing again. So this is five to six hours later. So my point is that, you know, I got the dose, quote unquote, right. You know, that my 10 units eventually got me to where I wanted to be. There's just this huge period where you have this spike after eating that is completely frustrating. And had I woke up at, you know, four in the morning with my CGM going off and taking some more insulin, well, I would have gone low. So the problem isn't always that we're getting our dose wrong, you know, per, you know, per se. Like, I actually did a pretty good job figuring out how much insulin I needed, but the timing is just off. If I took this insulin a little bit earlier or this insulin actually worked when it needed to work, um, it would have been a completely different situation. So this happens, this stuff happens all the time and it's really frustrating. Not to mention that 10 units one day might be different than 10 units the other day or in the morning versus night. So, you know, the type 1 diabetes fairy likes to come and make things more and more complicated for us all the time. So what is a Frezza and how can it help? So a Frezza is an inhaled insulin and I'm holding the inhaler here as you can see in this, this, this hand model. Um, and basically, it's pretty obvious that it's an inhaled insulin. You open up the little um, thing like this, and you load these cartridges in. Um, you can see this is a blue one that's going in. Once you load it, you kind of clip it down, and then you inhale it. And I have a, a really important video on actually how to inhale it um, in a second. So what do these um, cartridges come at? You know, what are the sizes? So they actually come in four unit increments. So you can take four units, eight units, 12 units, et cetera. So I know people that haven't heard of this before are probably thinking, well, that's much too rigid. You know, I want to take 1.37 units or something like that. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. But the other thing to keep in mind, and I, I can't say this enough, is that the unit to unit conversion is not exact. So four units of a Frezza is not equal to four units of Humalog or Novolog. Four units of a Frezza is more, it's closer to probably two, two and a half units of Humalog. So for you really insulin sensitive, you know, petite women out there, taking four units is more like taking two, two and a half, which is, you know, it, it's, a, it's a reasonable dose, but not like a huge wallop. So it, it's different because you can only take it in these, these, you know, kind of big chunks, four, eight, and 12. And it comes in these, you know, these packets that you can keep the, the ones that you're not using in the fridge. And then the ones that you are using, you just carry around in your pocket. And once you kind of puncture these, um, you know, the little blister packs, you ha still have, you know, a couple days to kind of use it. So um, you do have to carry these things around with you, fours and eights or twelves or whatever you need. And then obviously the inhaler. 
But you get a couple different inhalers each time. Um, but you can use one inhaler for a couple of weeks at least. So this is just what the blister packs look like when you open them. You literally just pop these things out, you put it in your little inhaler, and you're off to the races. So, so why is it cool or why is it different? So this is a slide looking at you know, taking 10 units of a, of a rapid acting analog, so this would be Humalog or Novolog, versus taking eight units of a Fresa. And this is, all this is doing is showing when the insulin is working relative to how long after you took it. So first you can see, let's just call it Humalog or Novolog, that after you take it, you know, it takes a while to start acting, and then it peaks maybe after an hour, and then it hangs around for three, four, sometimes more, you know, sometimes longer. So this is kind of what we're dealing with, with much most of us have in our pumps or using as, as a shot. Now compare this to a Fresa, which you get this really rapid onset that literally within minutes this starts working in kind of your bloodstream. The reason for that is you're, you're inhaling this. There's a lot of vascular supply in your, in your lungs. It gets into your blood supply almost immediately. So you get this really rapid effect, and then it gets out of your system really quickly. So when you take it, it works like gangbusters right away, and then it's pretty much gone. So it's very, very different. So there's this rapid off, and then you know, kind of rapid, rapid on, rapid off. So it starts working immediately, and then it's gone by about 90 minutes or so. So already you can probably start to think how you might dose this. You know, so you can actually take this right when you eat, or maybe a little bit after you start eating because it works so quickly. And then an hour and a half later, if your blood sugars are high, you can dose it again. So you know, we've all been told that insulin stacking, if you take an insulin dose, don't take another one in two hours because you're stacking your dose. That's true if you're dealing with one of these you know, insulins because you're gonna keep, kind of keep increasing how much is in your system. But with a Fresa, it's very different. So this is important to know if you, you know, are considering trying it. So rapid correction, again, this is one of my CGMs. I like to take pictures of these. Um, and I like to show this one because you can see God knows what happened again. I ate something and didn't bolus or whatever. And uh, I took eight units of a Fresa. And you can see how rapid this comes down. I mean, have you ever seen something like that on your CGM before without taking f five zillion units? You know, usually if I took eight units of uh, Humalog or Novolog, it would go like this, right? And then you're waiting to eat, waiting to eat, getting kind of grumpy. Um, so this, you know, you can see how these dots are just kind of spread out and, you know, because this is happening so fast. But then interestingly, I didn't eat anything. You know, and it's kind of weird. So when you first start it, you kind of got to ride this wave. You see the, you know, double arrows down, and then it just gets out of your system. And Steve calls this exit stage right, where things just kind of stabilize. Now, this doesn't happen all the time, but this is not an uncommon um, Afresa looking correction. So this is very unlike um, insulins that you're, that you're currently using. So it works really well to bring down those stubborn highs. You know, your blood sugar's 300. Here's something that not everybody knows, that the higher your blood sugars are, the more insulin resistant you become, okay? So if your blood sugar is 120, and you take two units of insulin, it might drop you 50 points. Your blood sugar is 320 and you take two units of unit insulin, it might drop you 10 points. So you, these, these correction ranges change depending on what your blood sugars are. And I see a lot of people nodding their heads that you've experienced that. So a Fresa can help with these really stubborn highs, get things down quickly, um, and um, you know, hopefully get you kind of going about your day again. Okay, so it can correct fast. Um, it's good for these you know, stubborn highs, like I call them. But what else is it good for? So I just Googled you know, high carb meals, and the first thing that came up was Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> eating a big bowl of pasta. But it, it's, you know, I, since I started using a Fresa, I started eating things that I just had been avoiding for years. Like I started eating pasta again. Um, in San Diego, we love these things called acai bowls, which are basically some weird fruit called acai. I don't even know what it is, really. It's like this frozen fruit, and you put granola on it, and coconut, and honey, and then they top it off with bananas and strawberries. It's delicious. Um, but if I ate that before, like, you know, I'm really asking for it. So, you know, having something that can really combat a high carb meal is nice. I'm not advocating that everybody go out and eat all these things all the time. But it does, it, it makes um, these kind of things that used to be unmanageable. Like if I was up against that bowl of pasta, I'd be worried. Um, so having something that can work as quick as the food is, is really novel. So, and then I also, there's a picture of a kid eating candy and passing out. So, you know, <laughs> it just goes along with high carb meals. So, all right, so what's the proper technique? I had my friend, uh, Dr. Steve Edelman, to, um, to show us this. So we were on a Southwest flight the other day, and Steve, God bless him, likes to sit in the middle so he can sit next to me. So here he is um, sitting next to me on the, on the flight. And this was one of the first times that we used it. So he, he was going to show me the, the proper technique. So let's see.
So that's the right way to do it. It doesn't work unless you kind of raise your eyebrows in a suspicious way. Um, I will say that since using it, I get more or funnier looks using this than bringing out a needle and a syringe, you know, injecting it. Because people are kind of used at this time to insulin being injected, but you know, when you're inhaling something, people think it's, it's something a little funny. So the woman next to us was reading this book, but definitely giving us some sideways. <laughs> All right, so how to dose it. So I already mentioned this once, and I'm going to say it again, is that the most important thing to know is that it's not unit to unit. They just didn't get the conversion quite right. So four units of Efreza is about equal to two and a half of Humalog or Novolog. So the first time that we actually took this, Steve and I, we, um, we had a, a fellows conference where we were teaching the fellows about diabetes cases and stuff like that. And Steve says there's this new um, you know, insulin, Efreza, uh, where Jeremy and I are going to try it right in front of you and see how it goes and things like that. So <laughs> Steve, you know, we're both about to eat a sandwich. Steve takes four units. He puts it in the thing and takes just the biggest inhalation I've ever seen anybody take and immediately starts coughing, like all over the place. <laughs> and the fellows are kind of like, what's going on? And then Steve gets out a straw and puts it in his nose and tries to suck up like <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything that was on the table. So that's not the way to do it. Um, but the point I wanted to make about this is I was eating half a sandwich and I took four units of a Frezza, which four units for half a sandwich would normally be kind of the right dose for me. But since four units is more like two and a half, I really underdosed myself. So after eating that half a sandwich, my blood sugar went up to like 250 or whatever, and I said, this stuff doesn't work. And I, I didn't try it again for months. So it's not that it didn't work, it's just that the dose is, is not right. So you really need to keep this in mind um, that you almost need to double kind of what you're taking in your head um, to get close to what you actually need. Um, the cough, I don't really mention um, later, so I'll just say now that when you start, you will get a little bit of a cough. Most people will. It's a little bit like, it sounds bad, but it's not that bad. It's a little bit like inhaling sand at first. Um, it's not that bad. Um, but so it'll be like a little bit of a tickle. And you might feel the urge to cough, but even if you do, um, you get the, you, you know, when you inhale it, it gets into your lungs really rapidly. So it's not like you're coughing it back out. People always worry, am I getting it, am I not getting it? And usually after about a month or so, it goes away. Um, so it's just something to be aware of that it's the most common side effect. And as far as we know, it doesn't cause, with all the long-term studies, it doesn't cause lung damage. People worry about it, lung cancer, all these kinds of things. It seems very, very safe. So basically think of Efreza as quicker, but half as potent. Okay. So what about conversions? All right. So I'm going to show you kind of a quantitative way to do it, and then I'm going to show you how I do this. So if you want to know what should my correction factor be with Efreza, you can kind of double what your dose or your correction factor is now. So let's just say, this, this is probably about my correction factor, that one unit drops me about 35 points. So I kind of just double that number and make it 70, and that four units will drop me about 70 points or so. So this just gets you in the ballpark. If you're wondering how much you know, effect will four units have, the best thing to do if you want to try a Frezza is hopefully get a CGM or just test frequently. Pick a time when your blood sugar is high, 250 or so. Take four units and just see what happens. And then you get an idea of, okay, I was 250, and then after an hour and a half, I'm 130. So it dropped me 120 points or whatever. And keep testing that over and over again. You can do that with Humalog and Novolog also. So this is kind of, you know, where I was when I started. And it doesn't actually drop me that much, but that's kind of a, a target that I used. What about carb ratios? If you want to figure this out, you can do kind of the same thing. Just double it. So I was, you know, 1 to 10. And four units of Efreza probably covers 20 grams of carbs. Um, maybe not quite that much, but this is a good starting point. Just double your correction factor, double your carb ratio, and that's what four units will do. Okay? So test these. But, you know, when I was making this talk, I actually thought to myself, what do I actually do? Because I, to be honest, I don't really officially count carbs. I never learned. You know, when I was diagnosed, it was the exchange system of fats and proteins and things like that. So I've become more, you know, I do some kind of carb counting in my head, obviously. But I don't, I don't think I put a number to it all the time. It's more like, you know, I know that sandwich or that burrito or whatever. So with Efreza, it's become more qualitative to me. <laughs> that, you know, four units is kind of a snack. You know, I'm not worrying about how many exact carbs it is or whatever. And this is where I start with. Start with the four units for a snack. And if I'm eating kind of a meal, you know, or sandwich or half a sandwich, I would start with eight units. I might have to dose again. And then if I'm really going for it, um, <laughs> I might do an eight and a four, or you know, they actually do sell 12s, as just a kind of a starting point. 
So I, I like this idea of taking diabetes from a, a quantitative thing of, you know, 23 carbs, my blood sugar is 187, and I need 2.75 units, to more qualitative of, should I take a blue, should I take a green? Um, you know, I like that idea. So to drive this point home, I have this picture that I just found on the internet, and I liked it. So there's all these guys here, right? And a quantitative description of this would be, there's 23 males with average height of 61 inches, weight of 220 pounds, and age of 48. So this to me is where we're at now with carb counting. I'm eating 17 grams of carbs, my blood sugar is 180, my sensitivity factor is this, and I have to do this integrated calculus to figure out, you know, what my dose should be. But a qualitative description would be a bunch of drunk dudes dressed like Magnum PI. <laughs> and everybody can do that, right? So I like this idea of kind of trying to simplify our dosing, and, and Afreza inadvertently has stumbled upon this that in making the doses more rigid, 4, 8, and 12, it makes you have to be kind of more big picture, which for me, I, I, I kind of like that. So making diabetes a bunch of drunk dudes. It's just, you know, starting with these, these doses, 4, 8, or 12, you know, people that use a Fresa will say, like, I'm a green guy, or I'm a blue person. You know, like, that's what I start with for most of my meals, and then I dose again. So the second most important thing, the starting dose is, you know, is, is one thing. But for most meals with a Fresa, you have to dose twice. Okay, and the reason for that is because it's out of your system in 90 minutes. And if you eat a meal with fat or protein, that fat and protein can be digested for three, four hours. So typically what happens is you take a first dose, and then I tell patients to set their CGM alarm at whatever they're comfortable at, let's say 180. And if that alarm goes off after an hour and a half, 90 minutes or so, you take the follow-on dose, or the second dose. And what you can see is, this was actually me eating an, an acai bowl, that I took, you know, I have a slide later, it was eight units, I waited for my, my blood sugar to go up, and I took four units, and you can see how it really helps you turn that corner really quickly. You know, if I, if I took Humalog or Novolog, you know, I might have gone up and then eventually come back down. So this follow-up dose around 90 minutes later is something that you have to be aware of, that you're gonna have to probably take a second dose, um, and you can just set your CG alarm. Maybe you don't have to take a second dose, but most times you do. Um, if it's an inhalation, it's not that big of a deal as long as you, know, you don't have problems coughing, et cetera. So when to give this follow-on dose. So set your alarm, let's say, for 180 or so initially. Maybe you want to start at 200, that's fine. Um, you can redose after about 60 to 90 minutes. That's also something very, very different. We're told never to do that. So whenever your blood sugar goes above 180, you can just take a, a different dose. So start by taking four units whenever your CGM alarm goes off. And I'm a big fan of setting your CGM alarms for actionable items. So rather than your CGM alarm just going off and just bothering you, set your alarm for a point that you're gonna do something about it. So every time my CGM alarm goes off and I'm high, you know, I can take a dose of a Fresa. Or if it goes off and I'm low, I need to get juice. This isn't just you know, designed to just bug me. It's supposed to tell me to do something. Um, so if you wanna know what should my follow-on dose be, just start with four units. And then if you're you know, a little bit more insulin resistant or you know, you're eating a, a bigger meal, it might be eight units. And you can play around with these. Um, so for this particular case, I took eight units. My alarm went off, I took four units. So this took me a while to kind of figure this out, but this is the, um, you know, one of the advantages of the Fresa. But again, it's completely different. So it'll take trial and error, and it'll take you know, the right person that is willing to um, kind of experiment a little bit. All right, so let's do a case. All right, so this is a good friend of mine, his name's Doug, and um, he's just a great guy, just really, really handsome, really good guy. Um, super awesome dude, type 1 diabetes for 20 plus years. Um, he does well on insulin pump and CGM with an A1C that is none of your damn business. And... Um, <laughs> So he has some uh, semi-frequent episodes of hypoglycemia and frustrated by the slow onset of rapid acting insulins and prolonged duration of action. So pretty classic um, case, right? So Doug continued. Discussing starting a Fresa with his provider. He actually sees Dr. Edelman, a great doctor. Um, sent for spirometry. So this is important. So what is spirometry? Spirometry is a little thing that maybe if you had asthma you've done before where you breathe into it and it just tells you how forceful your lung capacity is. So it literally takes one second that you blow into it and it just tells you, you know, what your underlying lung function is, more or less. It's a good idea to get this when you start taking a Fresa, and then they'll ask you to do it again at six months and 12 months. The main reason we do it is to make sure you don't have some underlying uh, lung disease to begin with that we didn't know about. 
um, like COPD or emphysema or something like that. So that, if they have it in the office, literally takes one second. And you just want to make sure it's normal, um, and then you can start it. So start on combo packs of fours and eights. Um, and here's some important dosing information for Doug. So take a Fresa at the beginning of the meal or even 10 to 15 minutes after you eat, okay? If you're eating a high carb meal, right at the beginning of the meal is probably a good idea. If you're eating something that's more high fat, more protein, you probably want to delay it a little bit. Um, start by taking four units for small meals and snacks and eight units for larger meals is a good kind of general rule. Um, set your CGM alarm, like I said, at 180, and then when it goes off, you can take a correction dose of around 40, four units. And for corrections, start by seeing how much four units drops you, and here's how. So if you want to start on a Fresa, don't change anything. Stay on your pump, stay on your CGM, all that stuff. Just get it as kind of a supplemental, if you can. Wait till your blood sugar is high. You know, in this case, Doug took eight units when his blood sugar was 240, came down to 80. So eight units, in this case, dropped him 160 points. And doing that over and over again just gives you an idea of kind of how rapid uh, this will work and how kind of potent it is. All right, so I showed that. So Doug continued. All right. So <laughs> you, can, you can find all kinds of things when you Google. I just started Googling Doug, and this came up, and I liked it. Um, so he's eventually switched off his pump uh, to basal insulin. And some people will do this. Some people will, will use a Fresa as just an adjunctive. I stay on my pump. I use it when I when I'm have a real high or whatever. Some people love it so much they use it for all their meal times and corrections. Um, I, would, I would do this in incremental steps. Um, started using a Fresa exclusively for all meals and corrections. A1C improved slightly, um, but really it's more about the time and range and the frustrations of these highs and things than A1C personally for me. And no change in, in spirometry, which is good. So I got to keep moving. So the summary of a Fresa is you can use it for all meals or intermittently. And intermittent use is ideal to correct blood sugars rapidly or when eating a high carb meal. Um, use of CGM is highly recommended, so you can really kind of pay attention to how this is affecting you. And take it the start of the meal or just after eating. And you'll need two doses for most meals. I guarantee that most of your providers or practitioners will not tell you any of this information because it's a, it's a newer medication, it's a little bit nuanced on how to use it. So knowing this, if you want to try it, is really important. Okay, maybe you're saying that is way too much different stuff. Okay, I don't want to inhale something. I don't want to learn how new insulin works, all this. So there is a new um, uh, kind of traditional insulin called FIAS, which stands for faster acting aspart. So aspart is Novolog, so everybody knows Novolog. And this is now a slightly faster version of Novolog. The nice thing about this is it's, you know, it comes in a pen, it comes in a vial. You can actually put it in your, your pump, do all the normal stuff that you're, you're used to using it um, and not have to learn how a new insulin works. So I'll say more about this. So what is it? It's Novolog, and you can see Novolog's here, this kind of little structure. And they added two things to it, basically vitamin B3 and an amino acid that makes it get absorbed a little bit slow, or faster, sorry. So when you inject it, it gets into your bloodstream faster, which means it can help those, those spikes after meals and things like that. So how much faster? Well, here's kind of the Novolog curve of, you know, that we're used to. It peaks, you know, an hour or so. And the faster acting aspart, it basically gets in your system a little bit faster and peaks a little bit earlier, okay? This is on the order of a few minutes or so. So the bad news is it's not completely different. It's not like it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks and solve all your carb problems. That's the bad news. The good news is that it's not, um, you know, it's so different that you have to really change anything. So when I put people on this, I say, ooh, sorry. I say, keep doing your normal pumps, your correction factors, still bolus before a meal like you are normally. And you might notice that this takes the edge off your highs, um, that you don't go quite so high after a meal, these kinds of things. So to be honest, when I saw the initial data, I said, well, I don't know, isn't this really going to work? But I've been trying it now for um, you know, a month or two, and I, have, I think I have noticed a difference, that this works you know, a little bit better. And the good news is that they've, they've priced this the same as Novolog, so I'm hoping it's going to be very easy for people to get. So my approach to this is if you're already using you know, an, an analog insulin like Novolog or Humalog, why not? Just give it a shot. See if you notice that you know, you're not having so many highs after meals or that maybe you kind of turn around from your highs a little bit faster. So one kind of data slide. This is basically they took a bunch of type 1s. They gave them an injection of Novolog or this Fiasp and gave them a meal and saw what happened to their blood sugars. So right here, they gave them a dose of 0.1 units per kilogram which is probably, you know, six to ten units or so of either hum, humal, or sorry, Novolog 
or FIASP. And you can see after an hour that the FIASP blood sugars were 21 milligrams per deciliter lower, and after two hours, 12 milligrams per deciliter lower. So again, it's not like 100 points lower, but it's definitely a little bit better, and it works a little bit faster. So I think just knowing about this, this is in the pharmacies now that you can get prescriptions for this, um, is, to, is to give it a shot. So bottom line for FIASP, there's my bottom line. It's a little bit faster. Don't change anything. If uh, you're doing it, just try it. And again, it's called faster acting aspart. So people think, oh, I take it and I'm gonna be hypoglycemic 10 minutes later. And they start you know, thinking they need to inject after they eat. No, you still need a bolus before you eat. I tell people in general, 15 to 20 minutes before you eat is a good rule of thumb for most meals. We call that pre-bolusing. And that's incredibly important to have the insulin acting when your food is. Um, and it can help you turn the corner a little bit quicker. So Afreza is a great kind of brand new or newer you know, insulin that, that works completely differently, hits you like a ton of bricks and then it's out of your system, but way more nuanced. Fiasp is not quite as um, dramatic, but very similar to kind of what you've already been doing. All right, last couple things, there's two more slides and then I'll wrap it up and I know we gotta go to a break. So what about basal insulin? I don't wanna forget about it. And um, these are not, I wouldn't call these new anymore because they've been around for a couple years, but who here uses shots and not a pump? Okay. And first of all, do not feel like second class citizens. I use shots for forever. And you know, it's all about personal choice. I'm a huge believer that everybody should be on a CGM. Pumps, shots, whatever works for you, okay? I remember like, you know, when I told people I did shots, I felt like I need, had to apologize or something. Um, <laughs> so if you are on shots and you take basal insulin, which you do, you, you should be on one of these basal insulins. Most of you are probably on Lantus or some on Levomir, but these new basal insulins are, are a little bit better. They last longer, they're more consistent. Um, you know, so everybody knows you take Lantus, sometimes it wears off at the end of the day. Um, you're getting different amounts of insulin at 8 a.m. versus 8 p.m. So these insulins are much more consistent. They have less hypoglycemia. Um, and so really, if you're, if you're taking shots, you should be on one of these. Just two quick pictures just showing that this is basically Lantus how it worked in this study over you know, 24 hours, that actually has a little bit of a peak, and then it starts wearing off. So if you take it at night, it might actually be kind of peaking at 2 a.m., you know, causing some hypoglycemia, and then wearing off the rest of the day. So it can make it kind of tough to know where you stand. And Tugeo is just a, a longer, flatter version of that. And the same thing with Traceva. So with basal insulin, it's all about consistency. You wanna know that when you take that dose, you're getting the same amount of insulin the whole day long. And both these insulins are, are definitely uh, incremental improvements. I'll tell you one quick story about Traceva. So if you're coming off of a pump and, um, and wanna go onto one of these shots, one thing you have to keep in mind is that because they last so long, it can take a while for them to get to kind of steady state. So let's say you took off your pump and you gave yourself some Traceva or Tugeo. It's gonna take three days or so for that basal to really kind of build up in your body. So for those first couple days, you might notice you're giving yourself you know, a lot of extra shots. So I was coming off a pump, I wanted to try Traceva, and I normally take 25 units of basal insulin, and I thought to myself, and this is a good idea, <laughs> I'm just gonna double my dose and get things started. So instead of taking 25 units of um, Traceva, I was gonna take 50 units, give myself kind of a loading dose. But instead of reaching for the Traceva, I reached for Novolog. Yeah. And I took 50 units of Novolog. And it took me a while to figure it out, but I ate everything in sight. I ate two whole bowls of Cheerios. I call them rows of Oreos that I just demolished. I ate half a pizza. And um, eventually, I, I, I kind of hovered like 60, 70 the whole time. And eventually, I ended up taking some glucagon um, and did OK. But um, nothing against Traceba. That was just a Jeremy-like moment. Um, but uh, anyways. So what you need to know about these basal insulins, if you have type one and take basal insulin, you should be on one of these. They're much more consistent, less hypoglycemia, can count on the same insulin through the day, more flexible dosing. So really, it's a new day um, for insulin. So thanks for, for listening, and let's go to our break now. <laughs>